Hello once again ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another biology podcast. I hope this is finding you well, I hope you're all keeping it real and I hope you're ready to do some serious learning today. So without further ado, let's get on with some biology. Now at the start of the last podcast, we talked about the big picture of what we're learning about in this topic. We talked about the fact that during the whole topic what we're actually looking at is learning how DNA actually determines our traits. And to start off with, we recognised that the first thing we needed to learn about was, well, what does DNA actually look like? What's the structure of DNA? So I'm hoping you've got a reasonable understanding of that now. So you should know that every cell has a copy of the DNA of the organism. Well, pretty much every cell anyway. There's a few exceptions, but we'll just go with that. And from other biology you've done in the past, you should know that cells are created through cell division, and the two types of cell division are meiosis and mitosis. Now, mitosis is copying cells, so obviously within mitosis there needs to be some sort of mechanism where DNA is copied so that the new cell has a copy of the DNA. And meiosis is involved in actually making gametes, sperm, eggs, pollen, and so on. And obviously, in the same degree there, there's a need for DNA to be copied for the new cells. And that's where we're going to focus today. We're going to look, okay, yeah, we've looked at DNA and the structure of it. We've accepted that all cells have DNA, the same DNA, so that every cell has a, a full copy of the DNA. Now today what we're going to look at is, okay, well, how does DNA actually get copied so that every cell has an identical copy of the DNA? So every single cell that you have has exactly the same DNA as the very first cell that you were created from. So right when the fertilization happened and... The sperm and the egg got together and formed the first cell, the zygote. Every single cell that was created after that has the same copy of DNA. So that's what we're going to look at today. How does that actually happen? How does a DNA replicate? So let's start by having a quick review of where we were last time when we were talking about the structure of DNA. So on the uh, image in front of you, on your computer or your phone or whatever, you should see the diagram that we were looking at in the last, po last podcast that shows the structure of DNA on quite a sort of detailed molecular level. Now there's a couple of things I need to point out just to sort of bring to your attention and make sure you remember those and they're going to be important in today's session as well. And the first thing is, is looking at the sugar molecules and the position of the carbon atoms and we can see we've got one, two, three, four and five. Uh, the number one carbon atom on the sugar is the part that's closest to the base. So if we look at the top of the diagram there we've got the A that's attached to the sugar which is the pentagon and it's attached to the carbon atom that's labelled there number one. And if we move around, we can see the 3 and then the 5 as well. And the 3 and the 5 are really, really important. Now, the other thing I need to sort of quickly point out is this idea of the anti-parallel nature of DNA, which I'm hoping you should remember as well, which is basically the fact that one strand of the DNA is going in one direction and the other strand of the DNA is going the opposite direction. So they're not running parallel to each other, but they're actually running sort of opposite parallel. So, for example, if we just look at the pentagons, we can see that they're actually sort of pointing up on the left-hand side and pointing down on the right. Now, the other thing that's important to point out here is the ones that are pointing up, the f number five carbon atom is the one at the top, and the ones that are pointing down, the number five carbon atom is actually going down towards the bottom. So we've basically got like a five at the top on the left hand side and a three at the top on the right hand side. And that's going to be important as we move on to the next part of this session. So now let's look at how this molecule, how DNA actually can be replicated, how it all works. Well as with a lot of processes that go on inside cells, enzymes are actually involved. Now you will have learned about enzymes in the past when you were doing level one and level two biology or science um, and you may know different things about them but for today I need to sort of explain the role of enzymes in this whole process. So in the past you'll have learned that they're biological catalysts and that they speed things up in the way that they happen. And that's all true. But when we're actually talking about DNA replication, lots of things that happen at the cellular level in terms of genetics, it's possibly easier to think about enzymes as almost like little molecules that do different jobs. So for example, some enzymes actually make up pieces of DNA and other enzymes actually unzip the DNA. And we'll start talking about that in a little while. But basically, just this idea that enzymes do different jobs and within DNA replication, enzymes are really, really important. So one of the things you need to know after this podcast is the role of different enzymes. So what the different enzymes are called and what exactly that each of the enzymes does. Okay, so it's at this point 
hope we're going to bring the first, first video in and you'll see on the screen now we're going into the nucleus of a cell and now we can see DNA now the big pink blob there is the first enzyme and that's actually called helicase it's going to be labeled there and you can see the job of helicase is actually to unzip the DNA molecule and that's the first actual um, enzyme that we need to know about so helicase is, its job is to actually unzip the um, DNA molecule and then you can also see these little binding proteins you don't need to worry about them that's not part of what we're learning about so as the DNA is just continually being unwound there by the helicase enzyme we've also got a, another enzyme that's now becoming important and you'll see it coming into your screen just in a second there it is and um, DNA polymerase 3 now DNA polymerase 3 what it's actually responsible for is actually synthesizing the piece of DNA so it's actually using half of the DNA strand that's been unzipped as a template and then it just moves along the, the template strand if you like the piece of DNA that you can see there in blue and basically adds on the other nucleotides so for example if it has an A it will add a T and then a sugar and a phosphate and so on and then if the next one is G it'll add a C and basically it starts to build up the other half of the DNA strand so ultimately you've then got two separate strands of DNA from one separate strand of DNA, and that's basically the idea of semi-conservative replication. So they're very, very simply, that's the second enzyme, and we're gonna look at that in a little bit more detail in a second, but that's DNA polymerase three, and the job of DNA polymerase three is to synthesize the new strand of DNA. Now you'll see on the video, it actually talks about continuous replication of leading strand is the label that you'll be able to see on the screen there. Now, we actually do have two separate strands of DNA, if you like. We have the leading strand and the lagging strand. And I just want to talk a little bit about what makes one different to the other. The difference between the two is really all about the way that, that DNA is actually, the new DNA is actually synthesized or made. And, and it's all about a particular rule in the way that DNA polymerase 3 can actually work. So you're looking at the video again. I've got another picture up, and it's the picture that you already recognize from the course book. And you'll see that we've got one complete strand on one side, on the left. And on the other side, we've got one nucleotide. Now, the nucleotide is made up of the base, the sugar, and the phosphate groups. And that's been added to the template strand, if you like. Now, DNA polymerase will then start to add more nucleotides onto that one nucleotide that's been added on the right-hand side. And it will just build up that other strand of DNA. However, there's a particular way that DNA polymerase 3 does this, and it follows a rule. Now, that rule is that new nucleotides can only be added to the three prime end of the, the, the DNA molecule, or the, the, the strand of DNA. So, basically, what I'm saying there is you can only add a new nucleotide onto the new strand of DNA at the number three carbon atom. Now, just take a look at, again at the image that you've got on your screens at the moment and just quite quickly try and write on in your head or, or just actually think where is number one two three four and five the carbon atoms on that sugar group there on that sugar molecule now i'm looking at that nucleotide on the right hand side and i'm hoping that you will have identified that number one is attached to the base which is the g number five is the sort of circle where it's um, pointing towards the phosphate group the p and number three is if you like in the top right hand corner of the pentagon there so if the new nucleotides can only be added to the three end, which way will this DNA strand be synthesized? Will there be a new nucleotide added to the top T there, above the present nucleotide on the right? Or will the new nucleotide be added to the bottom T, underneath the nucleotide on the right? So the image should be just changed by now. So you should now see, if you like, what the answer was. And you'll see that the new nucleotide that's been added to the, the one on the right is actually added above it. And the reason for that is that it's, it can only be added, the new nucleotide, the phosphate group there, can only be added to the three prime end of the sugar, or the third sugar atom on the sugar molecule. Now since that's about nearly the first 10 minutes up for YouTube, I'm going to have to stop there, and um, this will be continued on the next video, so there will be a part B, just like there was last time. So uh, click on to the other video, and I'll be, or you'll be hearing from me in a second. Keep it real.